Today we are going to discuss about a curve with a special property. Suppose this is a frictionless slide in the shape of that curve with lowermost point P. If any object is placed on this slide and then left, it slides down under the action of gravity and the speci uh, speciality of this curve is that no matter where the object is placed initially, it reaches the end of the curve in a fixed time. Today's problem is to find the equation of this curve. You are watching Brain Explorers, the world where brain starts working. Dotochrone problem is also known as isochrone problem. In Greek, prefix doto means same, prefix iso means equal and chrone means time. We will assume that the curve is frictionless and hence there will be no force acting on the object other than gravitational force and reaction force of slide. The problem can be solved with several methods. In this video, we are going to discuss the solution with virtual gravity. Whenever any object falls freely, it experiences an acceleration due to gravity. If we ignore resistance due to air, then no matter what is the mass and density of the object, the acceleration is always equal to g near earth surface that is almost equal to 9.8 meter per second square on the other hand if an object is moving on a frictionless horizontal plane then its ve uh, velocity is constant but acceleration is equal to zero because there is no motion in the direction of gravitational force but we need an intermediate case a frictionless plane making an angle theta with horizontal on this plane, object experiences an acceleration of g sin theta. This is from where the solution is getting its name. Now comes the important section of the solution. How can we add the condition of equal time? Pause the video and try to remember any such condition in which independent of the initial position, time of the event was constant. Ready? Let's proceed. If your answer is simple harmonic motion, you are correct. If you don't know about SHM, there is nothing to worry about. Let's see what is this. SHM is the to and fro motion performed by that object on which a force is acting directed towards a fixed point and is directly proportional to the distance between that fixed point and object. Suppose this is the object and is currently on its mean position. No force is acting on it. As it is displaced from this position, some force starts to acting on it. Say at any particular position, the force is 1 Newton. If this di uh, distance is tripled, the force also becomes triple, that is 3 Newtons. Similarly, for any increment in length, force increases in proportion something like stretching a spring. What will happen now if we leave the object on this position? Due to the force acting on the object, it starts moving towards its mean position. On reaching its mean position, there is no force acting on it but it has some velocity so it keeps moving. Again, a force starts acting on it towards mean position which retards the object. After reaching the same distance on the other side, it stops and starts moving back to its mean position. And the motion continues. Interesting fact is that no matter how far we are taking the object initially or how much we are stretching the spring initially, the time period of oscillation remains same if nature of force is unchanged, just like if spring is unchanged. We can check it mathematically. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Mass is constant, so acceleration is directly proportional to the distance of object from mean position. Negative sign represents that direction of force is towards the mean position. Now, remove this pro uh, proportionality sign and use a constant omega square. One reason to use square on omega is that even if omega is negative, it does not affect the direction of force and another reason is to get rid of an square root in further calculations. On, on solving this differential equation, we get x equals to sin omega t plus b. 
where A and B are arbitrary constants. The solution tells us that A is the maximum distance of object from its mean position and B is a constant which depends on the position at which we start to measure the time. At its mean position or when x is x1 equals to 0, t1 is equal to minus b by omega. Other possible values of omega t plus b can give us other timings when the object is at its mean position. Similarly, when object is first time at extreme position or when x is x2 equals to a, t2 is equal to 1 over omega times pi by 2 minus b. Time difference between these two positions is pi by 2 omega. It is one fourth of the time period of SHM because time period of SHM is defined as the time interval between two successive positions of object which are in the same phase that means same position and direction. Now it is clear that time taken by object to reach extreme position from mean position and also the time period of SHM is independent of its amplitude. So we can use this condition to find the equation of Dotto-Kron curve. Here, in place of x, we have written s which represents the length of the curve measured from lower point. It seems like it is a differential equation and can be directly solved to find the equation of curve but this is not so. Look that uh, time is also present in it. Focus on an infinitesimal small part of the curve. ds is the length of this part. Its vertical length is dy and horizontal length is dx. If the tangent touching the curve here is making an angle of theta, then the angle in the right triangle formed by ds, dy and dx is also theta. d2s by dt square is the acceleration of the object at this point, so we can replace it by minus g sin theta which we have already discussed in the video. Since theta is changing throughout the curve, acceleration also keeps changing. On differentiating this obtained equation, we get ds equals to g over omega square times cos theta d theta. From this right angle triangle, we have dx over ds equals to cos theta and dy over ds equals to sin theta. From relation omega squared equals to g sin theta, we find that uh, at theta equals to 0, s is equal to 0. Substitute ds in these equations. 2 cos squared theta is equal to cos 2 theta plus 1 and 2 sin theta cos theta can be written as sin 2 theta. Further steps of integration are shown on the screen. We are not using constants of integration because such constants are just in addition or subtraction with x and y in parametric equation and just shift the curve up down and left right so let us leave them but uh, there is no issue if you use them. On substituting phi in place of 2 theta and r in place of g over 4 omega squared we find that obtained equation is the equation of a cycloid. Cycloid is the locus of a point on a wheel which is moving on a straight line in any particular plane. Our equation represents a cycloid similar to the lower example shown on the screen. In this parametric equation of cycloid, radius of the circle which generates this cycloid is g over 4 omega squared. This implies that 1 over 2 omega is equal to square root r over g. The condition of an object sliding from rest to lowermost point of cycloid is analogous to the object going from extreme to mean position which is performing SHM. We have already calculated that this time interval is pi by twice omega. Thus, pi times square root r over g is the time taken by any object at rest to reach the lowermost point on this curve. Don't forget to like and share our video and for more such videos, subscribe to our channel Brain Exploders. Thanks for watching.